So let's call the meeting to order. And we have both board members and guests here. So the board members are Art, David, Janine, Julie, Maria, Prudence, Sheila, and myself, which is a full house. Everyone is here. Our guests today are Jason from the Recreation Center, Ben Wagner, Melinda Spiricillo, Resource Specialist for LHA, Lisa Gallinar, Regional Property Manager, and then we have some staff from the Senior Center, Megan, Amy, and not the least of which is Michelle. So thank you all for being here. If anybody has a topic, I don't think we have any people attending from the public, but they're invited to be heard if need be. So I think we can move to review the meetings from the minutes from last month's meeting. Has everybody had a chance to look at them? And does anybody have corrections other than me? So Prudence, here I go. Uh, I, I guess I had my mute on. Can you hear me now? I can. Okay, I, I do have a correction. Okay. Um, <clears throat> Under the dis under new business A, about uh, oh I don't know about eight lines down it said David addressed isolation and if there's a difference between men and women, it's just a small thing but I was actually referring to uh, isolation as it relates to depression so you could just add in isolation and depression that was kind of the the main thing there. Um, I guess that was okay. it. Okay. Anybody else? Let's pick so, a couple typos. Yep. Page two. Go ahead. Under B, slate of officers discussion. Uh, there is there is one, two, three, four lines down. It should be by Janine rather than my Janine. She is our Janine. I know she is. <laughs> and then a couple lines down, eliminate the word is, I think. Yeah. Just minor. Is that with that, Prudence? Yeah, I got it. Okay. I would like to go to old business positions update, second line. David's last name is spelled C-O-I-L-E. Those eyes are gonna just come back to haunt you. I know. <laughs> and then under new business discussion, the end of the first paragraph, Janine asked about the effect of the Louisville fire on on the Louisville Senior Center. It's just a little rough on the wording, I think. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Susan? Yes. I got, actually, I do have one more under, um... Under page three, down at the bottom of the page, sustainability. Yes. Uh, that, I wonder if I could suggest some language there. Go ahead. Why don't you email it to me, David? Okay, I'll do that. Right. Okay. Yeah, you know, I, I think I'm going to shorten the minutes because. Um, I, good. So I know we had agreed to a modified Robert's rules. However, 
I would like to just put topic, discussed, next steps without anything, any more verbiage. Okay. Um, so if we could, good. good, there we go. But yeah. uh, just some spelling errors. Uh, page three, city council, second line. I believe that the woman's name is Frank Hauser, F-R-A-N. Just missing the R after the F. It's actually Fank, F-A-N-K, Fankhauser. Okay. Then I found it a different on another website. And one more question then under area agency on aging, one, two, three, four, five lines down. Is it Angel Bar or Bond? Bond. B-O-N is a no. And I think I'll stop picking on Prudence because I think she does a great job. Yeah. Okay. So we need a motion to approve the minutes. So I'll move. I make a motion to approve the minutes. David and Julie. And then let's see, old business. That uh, first one is Lisa, you were going to fill us in on your meeting that you had after we last met. Good morning. Um, yes, so on January 6th, we did meet with the residents of Village Place Apartments and did our community kickoff meeting for their resyndication. Um, I do have the agenda. I can go through some of those points. I think will help clarify some of the questions that came up after about um, the last meeting. So at that meeting, we did give all residents, they had a sign that they received the HUD notification that they will not be displaced because of this renovation, that they have options during the renovation for staying in place, housing, and all of that. So they did receive that notification along with stipend amounts. We went through the steps of the resyndication. So our kickoff meeting was the first step. We had a building conditions and property conditions assessment on January 11th. We are currently rating the report back from them, which they went through the whole building. They went through 50% of the units. They looked at all the boiler systems, the roof, everything, complete inspection of the building. We hope to have an, um, any architectural designs and for the renovation for spring of 2022. Um, construction general contractor, we hope to have selected by fall of 2022. Financing deal negotiation, we'll be working on throughout the year. And we hope to close on the loan, which is kind of the clearance to begin the construction by the end of um, December of 2022 with construction starting early 2023. We estimate 18 months of construction and the start date is to be determined at this time. To begin, we will focus our work on the units to reduce, reduce the need of us going in and out of units and having construction in and out of units. Let's see. Some of the examples we gave to the residents is what we did at Aspen Meadows, roofing, siding, windows, landscaping, signage, um, new and improved outdoor common areas, interior flooring trim doors lighting paint cabinetry um, bath fixtures plumbing remodeling tubs into showers replacing for accommodations um, updating the hvac system baseboard heaters water heaters updating the common area kitchen common area upgrades new furniture new decor um, some of the things we're looking at to do specifically for Village Place will be the parking lot capacity and coordinating with Downtown Development Authority and the Center for People with Disabilities to improve parking at that location. Optimize use of the common areas, redoing the commercial kitchen to make it more user friendly for the residents. Expanding some of the laundry facilities on site. 
um, adding a second floor common area bathroom, removing popcorn ceilings throughout the whole project. Um, and we plan to coordinate this with the Kaufman Busway project as well, so that we're not interfering with their work and they wouldn't be interfering with ours. We went over temporary relocation. Some of the options that were posed to the residents, nothing has been decided yet, and this will be for, for future meetings. Um, the tenants could potentially stay in place depending on where we're at with COVID and construction work around them on the daily. They would need to leave their units during the day, but they would not have to be rehoused. They could be temporarily relocated to the hotel with a stipend, um, which LHA pays the stipend. They could stay with family and still get a stipend if they chose not to go to the hotel. They could go on vacation and still get the stipend. Um, or they could transfer on property to an already renovated unit, but they would not receive the stipend then. Um, hotel accommodations include the Candlewood Suites that we used before because of their accessible units, their kitchenettes, and that they were pet friendly. Stipends um, were discussed at the IRS rate. Um, the time of the Aspen Meadows relocation, it was about $50 per day for a typical unit relocation for a period of about three weeks with total payments to the residents of $1,150. This stipend does not count as income for the IRS for their qualifications or anything because it is part of an IRS program. So the IRS does not make them include this as income for the year. And the stipend is intended to cover the cost of additional food transportation that they might need while they're temporarily displaced. LHA does offer movers for during this whole process that if they're doing a full move, we'll pay for the movers to move them from one unit to another unit. We will pay for movers to help pack up their belongings if they are going to the hotel. And we will pay for movers just to help coordinate and um, bring everything to the center of the room if they're gonna stay in their unit. So we went through all these options with them. Let's see. We talked about if we do the elevator and when we do that, that um, accommodations would be provided for those residents who would need access outside of the building if the elevator was down for a week or two to be replaced. We let them know that we will be hiring a temporary relocation coordinator um, that will assist and meet with each resident individually to find out their needs, their wants, and any items that they're concerned about. And that will be their go-to person for the whole construction. So they will have a point person to deal directly with, and that person will deal with whoever needs to handle each situation. Support services will be provided both temporarily during relocation and throughout construction. We have resource specialists will help provide support, help with um, mail, grocery, prescription delivery, even on site and even at the hotel. They'll help coordinate all of that. Um, and we discussed that they're gonna have a lot of opportunities going forward to help give their input. We, that's the biggest thing we learned from Aspen Meadows is that the residents really wanted to have a little bit more input. So we're already working on questionnaires of things that they wanna see done. They have, we set up a suggestion box already that they have been dropping in suggestions for items that they think the property could use or what they would like to see in their apartment homes, what they would like to see throughout the common spaces, things that they wanna, be more accessible or things that they think they don't need that they currently have that could be kind of maybe revamped and reutilized. And then we told, we told them a lot of this is going to depend on where we're at with COVID. If we're still kind of in the same restriction, we're still having quite a bit of cases, we will probably go the hotel route. We let them know or that they could go stay with family, they could go on vacation, they would just need to be out of their unit during the time planned. Um, but we are, ready to pay for the hotel, we're ready to pay for the stipends, we're ready to do all of that. Any questions? <laughs> Julie's got a question on the chat uh, asking about, will the popcorn ceiling material be tested for asbestos? And if it tests possible, positive, what will the remediation process look like? I can't go into the remediation process, but that would be handled by the construction company and everything, they'll do the testing. They did all that at Aspen Meadows. They tested the walls, everything. They do everything in accordance with what's required through the IRS, through state and local laws, constructions, everything. Any other questions? <laughs> Thank you, Lisa. That was great. I mean, I wouldn't mind moving there. 
Seems like you're taking everything into account. Um, before Lisa sort of concludes, I know there were specific questions about Village Place. Um, for all of you who, who uh, you might have some other questions for Lisa as the regional um, housing property manager for LHA um, relative to anything else that's going on, Lisa might be able to address, um, might just take a few minutes and do that while she's here and in person. And I can provide a little update. I know many of you knew we opened our wait list for the Housing Choice Voucher Program last week. We received over 1,100 applications between oh 9 a.m. and 4 p.m. 150 people were selected to be on the wait list to receive a voucher in the next year. And those, those lottery numbers were posted this morning. So 150 yeah. people are what we put on the wait list because that is what we anticipate that we can give out in vouchers in the next year. And we will go through this process annually moving forward. Janine? Janine. Mm -hmm. um, I have one question about that. Um, as I was informed yesterday, what happens with the vouchers is that if a person is selected and they go on the waiting list, if they do not um, end up with housing within a year, uh, those vouchers go away. Um, is that correct? Mm -hmm. What it is, is once they're put on the wait list, if they are selected for a voucher, they are uh -huh. brought in for a briefing, they have to bring in all their income documentation, right. they get qualified, and then they are given 60 days to find a place to move to, or they can stay where they're at if their landlord chooses to accept the voucher. If they do not find a place to live or, or their landlord refuses the voucher, after the 60 days, they can ex ask for an extension for another 30 days to look or that voucher will be released into somebody else. Lisa, I think, Janine, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think Janine's question is that you are on the wait list for a voucher for 12 months. And if you don't get called, your name goes off and you have to reapply for the wait list. Is that right, Janine? Yes. Yeah, okay, so, sorry, yes. So annually we will redo and purge the wait list and start over every January. Can you give me some idea of how often does that come up that people uh, end up having to reapply for another voucher? And I know it's, it's hard to be specific, but I wanna have some idea about how big are those wait lists uh, and is, um, is there any moves towards uh, finding, finding housing that is more willing to accept vouchers? Let's see. So for those accepting vouchers, if you have, I believe it's over 20 units in Colorado, you have to accept the voucher. You can't discriminate based on income and Section 8 is an income. So they can't be discriminated against that. Only private landlords, if they have a single family home, could say no. So what you're saying is that all facilities, all apartment complexes uh, have to accept Section 8 vouchers? Correct. Because in Colorado, it is one of the um, fair housing ordinances that you can't be discriminated against for your source of income, how you're paying your rent. Does that include mobile home parks? I am not sure on that answer, but I will find out and get back to you on that one. Thank you. And then to answer the question on the wait list, we did 150 because that is based on the trend of the last few years that we believe we can accommodate everybody, one, all 150 in this next year. Okay. Um, we haven't opened the wait list in, since 2018, I believe, for the Housing Choice Voucher Program, but based on the trends of how many turnover uh, vouchers we have every year, 150 was a good number. If we end up going through all 150 prior, we will announce on our website we may open the wait list again in December or November once we get through all of that. That's very good news. As you can tell, housing, affordable housing is heavy on my mind right now. 
And LHA is currently looking for other sources of income for other types of vouchers besides the housing choice voucher and the project-based voucher. We're trying to get into the VAS voucher, which is for veterans. And there's a few other programs out there we're trying to look into and try to see if we can um, get funding to add vouchers into our portfolio. And, and just to let everybody know that, that there's Longmont Housing and then there's also Boulder County. Uh, so it's not just one organization, it's actually three. Um, there's actually a few more. There's MHC, yeah. Mental Health Partners Issues Vouchers, Boulder County Housing Partners, Boulder County Housing Authority and Longmont Housing Authority all have Boulder County. So these 150 vouchers are for all age groups, right? Correct. Right. Marcia, did you have a question? Yes. Um, uh, the people who have applied for vouchers uh, in the past did not understand that they could go off the list until they got a voucher. Um, and I'm not sure whether the policy was always like that, but I regularly hear from people who say, I've been on the list for nine years, what's going on? And um, so I have two questions. One is, uh, uh, has the policy changed, you know, that, that your application only lives for a year? And two, um, what have we done to to make sure that there is plenty of public outreach so that people know that they need to, to reapply annually. And they also need to know that, that they that if they get called, uh, if they get contacted regarding their voucher, they need to respond because otherwise it will be assumed that they're no longer interested and they'll get purged that way. Okay, so I'm going to try to cover all that. I might, might miss something, so just refresh me. So okay. the, the, there was no written policy prior in 2020 and all that. Early 2021, we took the current list that we had, which was about, I think, eight, 900 people, and we sent out emails, mailed letters to the address they had on file, and tried to contact them three different ways. They had, once they were mailed the letter, they had 30 days to respond to that letter stating that they were still interested and to update their contact information. Um, we even accepted some that came in up to six. We actually ended up waiting 60 days from the due date just to see if anything came in snail mail, if they didn't bring it in personally, um, for them to update their information. And we let them know that at the end of the year, we would be closed, um, starting fresh with a new list. And then this year on the applications, it did state that we will purge annually the list. And for us to make contact with these people who did get selected on our application this year, it asked for their phone number, if they had a home phone number, a cell phone number, email address, and current mailing address, along with any known caseworkers through any of the agencies that they may be working with, so that we had multiple ways to reach out to them. Because we know we work with a lot of homeless, a lot of um, seniors. So if they work with somebody from the senior center, that person is also listed on the application as a contact person. Okay, so that means you've got, they've got lots of ways to be contacted. Correct. But the, the, still what it comes down to is they should not fail to respond. They, they always have 30 days to do so. They may have as much as 60 days to do so, but never fail to respond if you still want um, a Correct. Lisa, yeah, so those Linda, Okay, go ahead. Oh, so those who were selected will also receive a letter outlining that they were selected for the wait list mm -hmm. and then that and the next steps. So if they get selected, they'll also receive a phone call and a, a letter stating that they have 30 days to come in and schedule to be have a briefing with the choice, housing choice voucher specialist to start the whole process. Right. And the wait list is for the voucher itself or for a, a property? Correct. It's the for voucher. the voucher. Yeah. That's okay. Right. Housing choice voucher. Right. So the steps are apply, get, get selected in the lottery, document yourself and enter the wait list. And the letter that they receive 
uh, did it um, outline all the documentation they needed? So because for a lot of people, it's gonna they're gonna have a lot of work to do to assemble their documentation. So the letter they'll receive will just say that they've been selected for the waitlist, and then if they're selected for a voucher, they'll get that letter, and they will have a briefing with the voucher specialist who will go through all the documentation they need to bring. They will set a deadline to bring it all in along with you know, sources of income, proof of um, citizenship and all of that. They have a, like a one-on-one -on -one meeting or a Zoom meeting with their case mm -hmm. um, or voucher specialist to go through everything they need and their time frame. And if they are having difficulties, they can always submit a reasonable accommodation request to extend that another 30 days. Got it. All right. Didn't get it the first time through, but thank you. <laughs> No problem. Uh, I have a question. I have a uh, go, ahead. go ahead, Art. I was just going to ask, I'm sure that it is, but uh, are these letters sent out in Spanish as well, or do you know who the Spanish speakers are, et cetera, or other languages? We did do, uh, even for the application process, we did English yes. and Spanish, and okay. all correspondence, depending on how they filled out their application, will be in either language. Thank you. And since we do are now under the city, we do have um, people who can translate if they need any other languages. Thank you. So Lisa, Melinda's asking how many people of the 800 to 900 you tried to contact responded? So from the, the ones in 2020, we had about three to 400 respond back and update their phone numbers, their addresses, all their contact. And I think we, got about 150 to 200 vouchers out from those that responded back. Thank you. Um, this is the, oh, sorry. You know, I just wanted you to know, I'm sure you do already know that at least at the senior center, we have a call list and we call everybody personally. We try to make sure that they fill out their application for the lottery. We schedule them for help uh, and, and help them get those applications in. And then we also personally call them if they are selected for the golden ticket uh, and uh, help in whatever way we can so they don't get left by the wayside. And I just wanted to add to the answer to Art's question. Um, for those individuals who struggle in whatever way of completing paperwork, um, Amy, Melissa, Melinda, Veronica, Janine, all were helping folks one-on-one -on -one to complete the application paperwork and make sure it got submitted correctly. So there is that one-on-one um, -on -one assistance for making sure language-wise, but also technologically and literacy-wise that people can, can participate. Any other questions for Lisa? Thank you, Lisa. Looks like we're moving on to Ben and Jason. Jason, you want me to start or? Go for it. Yeah, if you want to kick us off and I'll sprinkle some stuff in. <laughs> All right. Hi, everybody. Um, I'm Ben Wagner and I'm a supervisor in recreation. And we are just getting started. Uh, thank you. Probably, Michelle, did you bring that up or Jason? Gotcha, <laughs> or Robin? Ben. Somebody did. Um, gotcha. We are just getting started with a renewal, uh, a relook at after. Uh, seven years. Uh, it's supposed to be about every five years, but uh, we all know what happened a couple of years ago um, of the recreation master plan. And we are, Jason and I have been tasked in recreation uh, to uh, spearhead this uh, program for the year. And we are just getting started. Um, we're just getting started relooking at it ourselves. I was around when we did this, Jason was not, which I, I love having a new perspective from him and all the new folks that we have in, in recreation. Um, this will be a thing that we go to a, uh, an outside organization, a consultant uh, to 
do a program of getting feedback from the public. Um, but in this process, we've, we've talked with uh, Michelle about getting senior services more involved in this, the recreation side. We feel like we have always worked so well together with senior services, with recreation type programs. Um, and it really is a fit to have senior services more involved. And all of you got this, the master plan. And so I encourage you to look through it at future meetings or meetings specific to, to this, we will be looking for feedback from you guys um, based on where we go. We, like I said, we're just getting this started now. It's something that we felt like it was important to get out with you guys because your feedback and uh, everybody that comes to in contact with senior services feedback is really important with the recreation side of things. And the on page eight, there is a one paragraph blurb, I'll call it a blurb, explanation of the senior services group, as there is for each of the other community services areas. Um, that's not enough. So I think it went too far. There it is. That's not enough. Um, and again, we feel like, you know, when you talk about in there, um, and I'm, I can read either my, either way, um, arts and craft, dance and music, computers, um, all the, those are, those are also things that we do. And so to us, it, it's been a, a really good partnership and we work really well together. And so when we put this document out sometime quite a bit later this year, we're going to want to make sure we've got good feedback and that we address uh, concerns from senior services and not just concerns, but ideas. I mean, it's we want to be able to support as many people in the community as we can. That's our goal, plain and simple. I mean, it's we want to do as much as we can with what we're given in recreation. That is always where we're trying to go. So that's a kind of my general overview. I didn't come prepared with a, a lot of info because we are at the very beginning of this. Um, so go ahead with questions and I want to let Jason talk to you obviously because I'm sure he's got Prudence, you go first. Okay. So <laughs> um, my question is for Michelle. Um, and I know that I can't remember what meeting it was, but we talked about um, having senior exercise outside, and there are many cities in the country who have this. Um, and I'm wondering if this can be a recommendation or a re actual recommendation for these this plan here to start talking about that, funding for that, and um, where it would also be, we had talked about it be throughout the city, not just the west side, but it would go into the east side, north and south. I think um, Prudence, this is a great opportunity to do that on a community wide scale. I think that one of the challenges, uh, not challenges, opportunities that Ben and Jason and I will have um, is really talking about how do we make better use of all of our Longmont community in terms of health and wellness and better use. Recently, uh, recreation became more involved in the management of Union Reservoir. Um, we have our parks. We have, so I'm just saying from east to west, north to south, right. we have some beautiful outdoor spaces um, that we can certainly talk more about um, how to use them better. And I think. Um, it's good for Jason and Ben to hear that from you and, and we can think about that outdoor, the outdoor spaces for sure. Right. The second question I have, I understand you're using a consultant and I'm wondering what the consultant's background is. Have they been used before? And my third question is, had, um, are you using a consultant who will um, recommend uh, different funding rather than being in the city 
but perhaps a recreational district tax or mill levy, I should say. So we do not have a consultant yet. We, we are at the very beginning. We are going to have to do an RFP uh, request mm -hmm. for proposal of, of consultants. And it will be somebody that has experience in recreation. Um, when we put together a document in 2015, and we believe we did a very good document at that point, mm -hmm. um, we did use a consultant that was involved in recreation and we, that's absolutely where we wanna go. Um, and what was the second part of your question? I'm sorry. The second question is, is that um, oh. will the city be looking uh, will there be a group looking, I should say, at a recreational mill levy to take recreational services away from uh, the government of the city into a uh, funded um, situation? Because right now, um, the deterioration of the rec center, Centennial Pool, and St. Verain um, I don't know, Jason, I see you at Centennial Pool often. Um, I know that pool is literally about to fall over. Um, and so having the funding sitting in the city is really not the answer because it's either flat or one to two percent. So I'm hoping when you look when you look for a consultant that you look at a consultant, that will look at different revenue streams of uh, for the rec recreation. And if the city wants to keep the money that they have spending on rec, I'm sure the public wouldn't mind if there was a separate revenue stream for it so that we could improve. The outdoor spaces are lovely. The indoor spaces are really deteriorating. So Ben and Jason, I think the question is, will the consultant also work on funding um, or is it just program and facility? Is it a funding consultant as well? Right now, I don't have that answer, but I think it's a wonderful suggestion. I, I, Thank I you. think that's, that's exactly the sort of ideas, suggestions we want to hear to be able to bring, bring up those topics. Um, both internally and, and certainly that topic has come up in the past and with a consultant. So I, I think that's a perfect example of, of what we'll be looking for, the type of ideas we'll be looking for. Jason, do you have anything to add to that? Yeah, yeah, I just want to echo that. I, I thank you so much. And it's always a pleasure to see you at Centennial and I invite anyone else to come out too. But yeah, thank you so much for that question. Um, I just have such a, a unique perspective coming in new, um, really looking at the infrastructure of, of our current facilities is so important. Um, I know it's important to myself and also Ben too, but we are at a unique stage where we really need to focus on looking at those structures and, and accounting for what our community needs are and we're, we're prepared to do that. Um, and I'm so glad you brought up the funding sources because that is such an important aspect, especially right now because you know, during these COVID times, people are being really careful with their with their money and they're being really diligent about their um, their spending. So it's it's our job to make sure that we sell that story. We get out in the community, we get their feedback from different demographics, and that's why we're here today. And I'm so excited to be here with you all. Um, and just that opportunity to get feedback from the community about what their needs are. Um, that's gonna be so influential to Ben and I when we go to select somebody to, to help us through this process. And, and I will just add real quick that the this document is geared toward programming. There is um, the, the facilities themselves are addressed more in the it's park and recreation facilities, but that doesn't mean this conversation can't happen in pertaining to what we're doing here. Um, absolutely. I think it's an excellent idea. And I will add that we agree entirely on the idea of outside. We certainly, you know, COVID pushed us outside um, and we are looking at opportunities. I am trying to convert our preschool on the side of this building into a covered area that we could do classes outside, for, for example, where we would actually have some shade from sun in the summer. And so that's 
we agree entirely on that. That's something we're already working on and love to see more of, and certainly will be a conversation for for this for this. Yeah, summer. and um, and Michelle mentioned union. I have a a lot of responsibility out there now too with recreation getting more involved at the union reservoir as far as the customer service, the contracts we serve out there. And then of course the, the, the wonderful beach and dog beach that we have there. Um, I'm so excited to report out to you guys that there has been some amazing headway that's happened with increased partnerships um, with, the, with the reservoir out there that um, we are focusing on that because as you know, that's an area of focus. Uh, especially during our COVID times to get people outside and recreate. And we have such amazing, beautiful places that we are seeing an uptick in people getting out and recreating. And of course, the new trail system that has been uh, developed out there, which has been phenomenal. So um, very exciting stuff that's, that's happening. Well, just to let you know that I have toured the new uh, Berthet Rec Center um <laughs> so i do go to other rec centers to see what they're like yeah and that center is really quite beautiful i don't know whether anybody has been there. um they have a lovely pool area even though i don't like i prefer the lewisville because they have separate areas you know they're using the same they used the space planner they didn't expand the building um but the Berthet one is really, really nice basketball. And one thing I noticed was their gym area, the machines are really separate from each other. I mean, it's, it's spread out. <laughs> um, so just, you know, um, a little tour by maybe city council members to other rec centers to see how they did it and how much money they spent um, would be helpful. Thanks for answering sure. questions. I appreciate it, Ben and Jason. So yeah. I just want to add in a couple of things. So over the years, prudence to that sort of tour possibility, um, and Ben and I had a recent conversation about going and touring some, some facilities. And this, this advisory board has toured other senior centers over the years and uh, more recent sort of recreation senior development has been in Thornton, has the brand new Trail Rins Rec Center and the brand new Senior Center. So I think as Ben and Jason and hopefully me and whoever replaces me move this forward, some tours for the Parks and Rec Board, for staff, for this, for our senior board could be built in to this process, Ben and Jason, I'm just throwing that out there. Um, the other thing I think is Ben and and Jason take the leadership in writing up the scope of services for the consultant. That might be a good point to come back and check in with the advisory boards, both Parks and Rec and this board, around that scope of service for the consultant. That'd be a good check-in point. Um, ben and Jason, I think, is a possibility. And um, part of be having been around so long um, I was actually, when I was hired, I was a recreation services employee back in 1981 uh, when recreation managed senior services. And because of the growth of our supportive services, our information referral, our counseling staff, et cetera, um, and because right now senior services does not have the same very ambitious recreation uh, revenue, uh, revenue expectations that Jason and Ben have. <laughs> We, we separated from recreation, but it's been um, an amicable divorce and we have worked over the years to make sure we're working together, we're not duplicating. Um, right now, uh, Carla Mathers, who is a recreation employee, actually sets up all the silver sneakers classes at the senior center, as an example. So we work really well and close together. In 2015, you all, and the staff here did not have a very robust role in the recreation master plan process. And I think what you're hearing from Ben and Jason and certainly from me is I think we need to be right there. And when we're asking, we need to be finding out how, how old are the respondents? What do you want? What, and really addressing some of the things um, that you all have talked about over the years, what my staff and certainly our colleagues in recreation have talked about. So it's a great opportunity. And I 
hope you all will fully embrace this um, and, and jump on board with really finding out the recreation and leisure needs of our community. And if they're appropriate to senior services and the senior center, great. If there's some ways that we're going to influence what the next facilities look like or upgrades, maintenance of current facilities, let's, let's uh, you know, keep talking about what we need to do. So, and I really appreciate Ben and Jason taking the lead on this. Sorry, Susan, go ahead. Okay, so it sounds like the recreation department needs some friends, just like the senior center has some friends. <laughs> the other thing that struck me a lot, it's just a different way of saying what Prudence is saying. The, since your last report, the population has increased and probably much more of a percentage increase in seniors. So we're important. Thank you for listening to us. Um, venues need to be updated, improved, or added onto, whether it's outdoor, indoor, there's just not enough. And this has been magnified by COVID. And, you know, at times we're getting, also we need to reserve places or get cards because only so many can be accommodated. And health is a big part of, you know, living. So let's encourage people to be a part of staying healthy. And also, um, I don't know if this would be a possibility, but it just feels like seniors get things pulled from them before everybody else. So we've lost Center Health Integrative Medicine. If there's a new facility, should there be rooms for those kinds of treatments? Possible. And pools, the Longmont United Hospital pool pulled from seniors, you know, and your exercise machines, okay, you have a lot in the rec center, but there's more people that would use them and they're just kind of crammed into every nook and cranny. Can't hear you, Prudence, but I'm sure you're agreeing. Yes, I, I, I don't use the machines, but when I go in there, I'm like, oh my God, like the person's sweat next to me is gonna fly onto me. And then you <laughs> add a school vacation, you, you know, forget it, you can't get in. I couldn't have said it better. Yes, yes to all of those things. Um, Jason, so we'll keep I, talking to you if you want to keep talking <laughs> to us. We want more. We're we're the type of recreation is the type of people we want. We want more. We want more for the community. Um, that's the type of folks we are for sure at our heart. And, uh, we agree entirely. And thank you for Susan for the uh, yeah and see, for the see, feedback. See, I, Susan, I do get a lot of calls about that pool closing and the warm water therapy, and I. I, that has got to be something that we look at. I, I don't know if we can solve that problem, but it's something we got to look at. Um, I do get calls about that. So thank you for bringing that up. Well, good. They're calling you. Perfect. Well, and, and I think it's really back to the funding mechanism. We almost put a therapy pool on the west side of the senior center back in 2001, and they are extraordinarily expensive. Um, and more so than regular pools is what I remember. So it's it's about the money. It's about the money, it's about the money. They need friends, they need friends. No, they need to take it away from the city and just do a mill levy so they are independent. And they have an independent streaming of funds rather than relying on um, the council and the uh, city manager to determine what the exercise needs are. So that's my two cents. <laughs> you can make it a cent. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else for Jason and Ben? Yeah, I have one question. Oh, sorry. Um, the, your 2015 plan did stress what I would call marketing, getting the word out that the the facilities and the programs that recreation um, offers. Have, have you, do you think you have succeeded in that or was there any way of measuring the input into the community? That is a complicated question. Oh. With a somewhat <laughs> complicated answer, unfortunately. Um, the quick answer is no, I don't think we've been entirely successful. Um, mm -hmm. The longer answer is we have 
absolutely made efforts in marketing and and we continue to grow um we it has always been our belief we should the city has changed their marketing philosophy entirely in the last year and so we're starting to adapt to that we are hoping it will be more flexible to our needs um because it's always been our belief that we should have a marketing person in recreation when you have $4 million of revenue to bring in that that's worth having. And, and we're probably, you know, J Jason can reflect this too, but we're probably the only city of our size that doesn't have a marketing person within recreation that we wow. heard of. But we are, I'll be politically correct and say, we are hopeful that the city design currently will allow us more flexibility in that. So did I answer your question a little? And Jason, do you have any? Yes, I'm afraid you did. Thank you. And I, I understand the, um, the, the non marketing issue. Thanks. Michelle? Um, so I would just add to that that marketing for the last two years has been very challenging during COVID. Yes. So we were gaining some ground pre COVID, and then between the city's kind of shift and COVID, we're, we, we were building we are rebuilding our, our marketing efforts. But Recreation and Senior Services have shared a marketing specialist for several years. Um, the friends helped pay for our portion uh, initially. And so um, it's a lot of work. Um, it, and we, I think Ben said it, we need more and we need dedicated is probably true. And question to Ben and Jason, um, I think it'd be helpful when you all are with me or however this is going to work, you have a timeline of what this process will be to make sure we touch base back with the advisory board on that timeline and especially call out what their role will be um, in that process. So absolutely, Michelle. So but I think um, that's just really important. We, we will hope to have a timeline as soon as we can. Um, right now, there are some questions that need to be answered in the city that we are kind of waiting on. Um, but yeah, timeline will be really important and we'll make sure that you guys have that immediately. And that'll be a, you know certainly a part of our next touch base too. Yeah, I, I'm all for marketing. However, if you're marketing spaces that are too small, cramped and in need of upgrades. I'm not really sure whether um, that strategy of, of marketing, um, you know, I, I, I don't see the benefit of that unless you are able to really present something that meets the needs of long, not only long, Longmont seniors now and long and in the future. Um, and five years ago, probably your, the population was probably about 70, 75,000, I'm not sure. It's now 100,000, we're as big as Boulder. So um, we should have the amenities. Um, and I also swim in Boulder. So I have been to their pools too. <laughs> so, um, Prudence, yeah, I came from Boulder. It's sort of chicken, and, chicken and egg, isn't it? It is. It is. If if you build it, they will come. Right, Jason. I was just saying, Prudence. I'm from Boulder. I came from Boulder, so I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. Any other questions for us? I think you're free to go, Ben. Jason. Okay. Um, <laughs> or stay. Ahead. Or stay. Thank you very much. Thank Please you for having us. Any, any time to reach out to us. Um, Jason and I are always happy to hear from anybody in the community at any time and, and love to hear great ideas. So thank everybody you. Have a great day. We'll be back in touch. Great. Thank you both very much. Thank you. Thank you. Well, Michelle, we're up to your position update. Well, we can't say a whole lot because we're still in process, but. Um, Sheila and Ruth or Megan, do you want to say anything but not too much? <laughs> <laughs> Two wonderful candidates <laughs> rose to the top. 
with very different skills and abilities, and it's a tough choice. Yes, Agreed. I agree. That's... There are two candidates uh, are very different and bring different skills, and I'm glad I don't have to make the decision between the two. <laughs> yeah. But so are they coming back for another interview? We have a, we, Megan's in, Megan is in the process of managing the next step, which was a written exercise, and she'll be sending that information back out to Ruth and Sheila and Robin, who were a part of the interview team. And uh, Megan had told the candidates we'll be making a decision by probably Friday, as I recall. So, um, but it's, uh, as Megan said yesterday, it's a classy decision to have. We, we had, uh, you only need one really good candidate and we had a couple that really felt right. So we're, we're excited. It was Best I've heard. <laughs> I know we had um, eight people apply this time. When we went through this process last summer, we had over 30 applicants. Um, but even with just the fewer people who were interested, it was uh, much easier to choose who was, who's the right fit. Um, and both Sheila and Ruth are right. Two out of the four that we interviewed are just head and shoulders. Really, both will work great. So that's great. the plan. Thank you. I have a question. Yes. Um, has salary been discussed with them so we don't lose them? It is posted as a part of the job announcement process. Okay. So they, right. they have that information. Okay. We don't want to lose them based on, oh, <laughs> I'm not being paid that. I want twice as much. <laughs> so moving on to the slate of officers. Art, you weren't here last time, but I think we had a unanimous agreement that we would like you to stay on as vice president if you are so inclined. You need to unmute yourself, but it looks like we have an affirmative head shake. You bet. Uh, you do an outstanding job. And uh, if I ever am needed, I uh, know I'd feel comfortable giving you a call and get some help. But uh, yeah, sure, I'd be glad to do that. All right. So do we have a motion to put Art on as or keep Art as vice president? All motion. I second. Prudence and Julie, Art, thank you. So we have our officers and we can move on. Let's see, we had the 2021 annual report discussion. So I believe as Susan and I recalled, and I think what's in the minutes is we were just gonna talk about things if folks had a chance to Look over the minutes and what resonated for you is um, things you would like to make sure to include in the report from 2021. And Prudence, I'll take notes and you take notes and maybe we'll pull something together if that's okay. Yeah. Sheila and I have, I personally have not looked with them because I had other issues to take care of. Um, and Sheila and I haven't gotten together. So if other members of the council have looked at the minutes, um, and have any uh, recommendations, we'll be glad to take them. Well, from memory, we had that one meeting where we talked about tossing or totally revamping the registration system. We said it's time and we'd rather see it begin sooner than later. That's what I remember as the most important or vibrant discussion that we had this year. Um, Susan, can, can you clarify, this is the online registration for many different city services? Yeah, but yeah. senior services um, is a big part of it. Yes, of course. Um, and yeah, I, I agree. That is like a festering sore on the city's website. <laughs> like two good candidate rose to the top. Well, this is a issue that rose to the top for me. Yeah, 
Am I correct in remembering that part of the issue has to do with the particular system that we're using and that in order to make that change, we have to look at the system that we're currently using um, because uh, that wasn't just for registering for seniors but had to do with the entire yeah. uh, registration in city council and- Museum, rec center, all that. Right, and, and I wasn't sure that you know, what control we had over that process other than saying, well, this sucks, you know. But, <laughs> you know I'll I, put that in the minutes. <laughs> so, Marcia, maybe you can help a little bit with that because, you know, it's, it's significant. Yeah. Uh, they would not have to change out the system. What they would have to do is hide it. You know what they what they do now is is you um, you just essentially link into that system's uh, native web services, and you have to create an account, and it's one account for everything. And um, the result of all of that is that that you lose the ability to put the um, the end user use cases where they belong on the website, you know, instead you get funneled into this awful, ugly maelstrom of, of how that system chose to expose itself on the web, which was a design afterthought, right? And what, what they need to do is have interposers software as a service that allows you to access each use case from the right spot on the front end and hide all this interaction from the back end. And I've actually had some conversations um, with the people, not uh, with the people who maintain it at this end. And they freely admit, you know, that they've had to take the path of least resistance because they did not have the human resources uh, or the funding to go back to the, pro the provider. To, to get it implemented properly. Um, so I don't think it's necessary that, that um, our recommendation needs to be replace the system. The recommendation needs to be correct the user interface so that we can expose functionality for the senior services with the other senior services information on the website and how they do that is their lookout but we just shouldn't take no for an answer right so it sounds like we want to make sure the annual plan uh, annual report includes the conversation and the um, key points of the discussion on the registration system does anybody have anything else they want to make sure gets looked at, Janine? Well, I was just going to say that what we need, the focus is A, we need a plan, and B, we need a deadline. You know, <laughs> are what you is talking the about, Are you talking about for that annual report or the registration system? No, the registration. <laughs> okay. No, 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 the registration. I mean, it's one thing to say, I'm concerned because this isn't working, but we need a plan, we need a deadline. We need you to do it and we need to know when we can expect that it'll be done. Now, whether that happens or not, I'm an optimist, you know, but at least to put it out there to make the statement. It's not gonna happen if you don't ask, right, Janine? Teams audio. Okay, any other annual report highlights or we're going to leave it with Prudence and Sheila? I think the two other things that stood out for me were the, the conversation about the um, street crossings, mm -hmm. right? And then also um, the, 
the RFP for the, um, you know, for foot care and massage and all the other services that we don't have. That is totally, totally on Michelle's third stove in her basement back burner. But yes, you are absolutely right. <laughs> So I think we leave it with Sheila and Prudence to pull it together. Thank you. And then we have the goals for 2022. And I think if we go to 2021, we don't have to take, we should remove the reopening plan because we're not reopening. We're monitoring health conditions and, you know, making adjustments as needed for what we're doing, whether it be virtual, in person, whatever, but we're not gonna reopen again 2022. We're gonna stay open no matter what it takes. Uh, Susan, what are going to be the, the uh, mass guidelines, given that that's going away on Thursday? Um, it, you know, is, is that going to be that they go away for the, the senior center too, or are we going to hold on to the masks a little bit longer at the center? It's a great question, Janine. I, um, my understanding is that Boulder County has not declared yet when. Larimer has said February 12th. Adams and Denver, and I think Douglas County said this week, some point this week, tomorrow or Friday or whatever. I have not heard anything from Boulder County or from the city with regard to Longmont. So maybe Marcia knows, but at this point, we are continuing with the mask mandate at the senior center. M Marcia, do you know anything different? Susan? Yes. Uh, I've been struggling trying to get the video on the, uh, get myself unmuted here. I got a new computer. I finally got it off, on again. Uh, can I go back to the, uh, to the annual report for just a second? Sure. Uh, one thing I'd like highlighted, and I, I don't know how it was handled in previous reports, but um, I would really like to have uh, the uh, counseling program that you have highlighted. I've been really impressed with the counseling staff and the peer support and everything and the support services and how they use all those, uh, put all those support services together to help the, um, to help the seniors through the, uh, counts, the whole counseling process. And I would even consider, you know, more staff, you know, like was just said, if you don't ask for it, you don't get it. But anyway, I think a, a start of that might be to, uh, I think it's a very strong counseling program. And uh, I really would, really would like to see that emphasized with an eye towards maybe laying the, fo the, the foundation for uh, maybe some more services in the future. So whatever you can do there. Good. Thanks, David. Briefly, folks, I don't know. Um, the, the change in council scheduling has, I fear, disrupted the lines of communication between the staff and the council. So we're feeling a little mushroomy these days. Um, but um, what I will say is that this, the official council set policy about these services is that we're following Boulder County Health's recommendations. And that's as much as I can say. So we're wearing masks and we're giving away free N95s right now. They're very snug if you have a larger head like someone like me, but. Call that brain matter, Michelle. Uh, no, I don't think so. I don't think so. <laughs> so um, for goals for 2022, can we can we jump back on that? So 
I heard you say, if we look at 2021, we're going to cross off number one. Yeah. We can probably cross off number two as well. Yeah. So I don't, what about number three? We didn't really do much. I can certainly ask Angel Bond to come and do a report from Mobility for All. Um, she might be able to help with that. Is there something else you'd like to do relative to number three? Because we really didn't do much. We, yeah, probably an update from her is due. Okay. Do you want to keep it as a goal? I guess that falls more under tasks. Okay. Um, so the age well plan process will kick back up here in the next several months. Do you want to keep that as a goal? My two cents is I would certainly hope so, <laughs> but. Yeah, we should probably keep that. Do you want, um, so others jump in, do you want the age well plan and do you want the rec master plan as a part of, of 2022? I would definitely like the rec master plan so that we're involved in that. I would like both. Yep. Um, Okay, any dissenters? <laughs> so um, number five, I actually have on the agenda later. This is a leftover from a few years ago. And um, I just want to revisit with this particular board that you still want to go forward with that. So um, I have it tentatively on the council work plan for this year. We were asked to identify some items that would be going back to city council. So that is an ordinance change um, to move the board from seven members and an alternate to nine members. So if that, um, that'd be great, at least now, or perhaps under new business A, for you all to make that decision um, and maybe a new motion, either to move it forward or, or stop and stick with seven in an alternate. But it would be helpful to have some direction from you all around that. I would like to have increased board member and no alternates because alternate is too confusing and it would, it would support quorum on days when not everyone is able to uh, attend. Uh, and um, it, being an alternate at one point in time, it was uh, one, it wasn't helpful for me and it was confusing at times, especially with the current, you know, rules and regulations that include voting and things like that. So I'd like to get rid of alternates and add one or two members. I agree, ditch the alternate, make it nine. Okay, all right, so, so Marcia's motion, Susan, are you seconding? Yes, I am. Okay, then um, you wanna call the vote? Any abstainers from increasing the board number to nine? If so, raise your hand, passed. Okay, so I'll keep that on the goals. The rec master plan stays. And then I'm just curious, based on today's conversation um, around marketing, is that a conversation you all would like to have with Erica around marketing senior services? Do you, yes. do you, do you want would. some input into that? I don't think we're reaching everybody that we should be reaching that could be helped by the services that we offer by the events and the lectures. Agreed. I feel like I'm out there talking to the world and, you know, 
I got Ruth to join us. I got somebody new on the lunch wagon yesterday, but I don't think people are really tuned in to all that's available to them. Okay, so it, so we would add that as a goal for this year? or, or I think so, yeah. Okay. Are there others? Um, I'd also like to have a conversation around, um, you know, potentially renaming the senior center. Um, I know being on the younger end of this group that there are people who are my age that are even a little, just a little bit older than me that are, you know, constantly say things to me like, oh, I would never go to the senior center. And I'm like, right. why would you not go to the senior center? There's so many great things there, right? I feel like the senior center is very geared towards, um, you know, the older end of the community. And I think that's a disservice to the younger end of the community. And so I'd like to see, you know, potentially conversation around renaming it, um, potentially conversation around marketing to, you know, those of us who are stepping into that senior heading, you know? Um, so those are just my, my thoughts for maybe the next year. And this also means a lot more evening programming because these people are working. Correct. Right. So could that be folded into marketing? That the marketing person would? Absolutely. Yeah. Whatever that process uh, is, however, I'd like it to be inclusive. Um, that it in, embraces, I mean, older adults doesn't particularly get it for me, but I think that in looking at that, I'd like it to be an inclusive term. Yep. Any other goals? We'll start with that. I'll write them up in the agenda and you can review them for March if that works for you. Yep. Michelle, I have one other and that is I would like to see and perhaps this is a part of the marketing uh, a push towards encouraging how can I contribute to this aspect of my community. I think that would fit into that marketing conversation really well, Janine. Thanks. Got enough on goals? I think so. So moving on to coffee with the council, March 26th. Are we talking to senior center if we're doing it in person or? Do we know right. how we're doing it? How we're doing it? So at this point, um, they are, uh, is my understanding, council is planning on having coffee with council in person on March 26th, and I've been asked uh, to host the at the senior center. So um, does that work for you all? And is there anybody who'd like to be Susan? Okay. Janine and Julie. Okay. All right, so we're on for March 26th at 9 a.m. And then you have confirmed posting at the library, but I thought they said no. Well, Sheila Conroy, thank you to Sheila. She did a little bit of snooping, or what do you want to call it, Sheila? <laughs> and uh, there are you. There are some board minute, board agendas posted at the library. So I called and I said, can we come back? And they said, yes. So way to go, Sheila. And um, if you all want to have your agendas and minutes posted, then you need to make a motion um, and do that officially. And then I will start sending them to the library. So I motion that we post at the library. Awesome. Sheila seconds.
any other old business? All right. I need clarification real quick. <clears throat> Michelle, the position update, uh, it's been a couple months, of course, for me, but you had two positions open. Uh, did you feel the other one? No, the custodian position is not filled and we will be getting ready to post the second counseling position probably in the next month. We had a couple internal organizational hiccups. So um, those two remain unfilled at this point. Okay. Yep. Thanks. And I just want to let you, know that let you know that again on that position I held through the last time, I'd be happy to help again if you need. Fabulous. Thanks, Art. So we did revisit the ordinance change request. And that puts us down to the March or April resource fair in Lenyon Park. So um, a few of us were in Lanyon Park uh, last fall and there is a group of uh, city staff and some community members who are looking at another resource uh, fair in Lanyon Park in March or April. Historically, the advisory board has had one or two members who wanted to participate. I don't have a date, I realize that. But um, is there an interest to, uh, for me to come back as soon as I have a date to see if there are any board members who'd like to participate um, in that resource fair? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Thank you. And do we have any other new business? Looks like we're going to reports then. Okay, so a couple of things. Um, the uh, with the direction from City Council, and Marcia maybe was going to speak to this, the City Clerk is looking at some different and increased involvement with, from the advisory boards in the um, recruitment interview selection process of new board members. So um, they are working on that and we'll have some uh, further information coming. Um, so I just wanted to let you know that. Uh, we don't currently have a, an opening in June, uh, which is the next recruitment interview selection timing, but um, it is something that, that um, council has directed the clerk staff to move forward with, so it is coming. Marsha, I don't know if you want to add anything to that. I'd be happy to. Um, you all have obviously been through the current selection process and being, um, you know, to, to a person very accomplished and, and erudite people who have a lot to offer to the community, um, being picked on the basis of a five minute interview is a little bit insulting. Uh, and so the alternative that's been proposed is, that ha is to have, um, the, the boards themselves or, or the, um, institutions that they represent themselves uh, go a lot further in the selection process than just recruiting and send forward either um, their pick or maybe their top two picks and let the council um, you know, do a more thorough uh, vetting of, of the individuals who are already more thoroughly vetted. And then uh, that way we can, we can ensure that there is a good fit uh, and that um, it's respectful of the candidates. So um, you know, that's the deal. It's great that, that the senior advisory board now has a, a two cycles to, to prepare to change the process, um, but I think it should be an improvement. This board has blessedly 
already it always ended up really functional and you guys get a lot done and bring a lot of information forward you know do things on the outside as homework for the board everything a board is supposed to do but a, a number of the other boards are either completely dysfunctional or else have been hijacked by special interests and uh you know it would just, I, I believe that this would be a big improvement in, in the process. Okay, thank you, Marsha. I appreciate that extra um, and, and better information. So it's coming, um, stay, stay tuned, right? That's, that'll, be, that'll be the ticket. Um, in March, um, Francie Jaffe from our sustainability city team would like to come and get some feedback <coughs> from you all on some needs and priorities. And David, if I'm stealing your report, I apologize, but um, she'd like to come in March and she'd like to come in May. So um, if anybody objects, please let me know. Um, I had given some of this information to Susan so she could uh, look at the agenda. And, and so at this point, we're kind of moving forward with that. But if you have an objection, please let us know. Or if you want something ahead of time so you know what you're responding to or anything that would make that feedback process better, um, please let me know. Or let David know, <laughs> <laughs> however that unfolds. Um, also, I have scheduled for the supportive services team. Uh, they are able to come in March and give you that report on their statistics and some of the things that have been unfolding for them. So that was something we talked about in January, and I have that scheduled for March. Um, should um, that come up? Um, we are looking at putting a coffee nook in the lobby of the senior center. It'll have coffee from eight to noon um, and the staff are kind of running with that. And that is really primarily, I would say, an opportunity to address some of the isolation issues that we've seen where people just wanna come and be with other people. They don't necessarily have a purpose like to go to a class or go have lunch. They just maybe need to get out of their house and just be where there is some things going on in a safe environment. So we're gonna try a coffee nook and see how that goes. Um, we had some feedback from a visitor to the advisory board. We had another person who made a point of an appointment with me. Um, and it's been kind of interesting to watch that unfold. So that's pulling together and Eric and Brandy and Robin are working on that. Um, I'd like to come back in March and um, get some input on 2023 budget ideas. So um, if you all can be thinking about that. Uh, I got, I've got some really good ideas of my own, but I'm really interested in what you're thinking. And then we had the annual meeting for the friends. There was a lot of material handed out, but I don't think all of you were there. And so before I um, overload your email inboxes, um, I, I, for those of you who weren't able to attend, I thought I would send the year end accomplishments and the budget in the board list, which you did get, um, but is there, is that something you're interested in or you want it the whole packet with all of the finance stuff and whatnot? I'd, I'd be interested in some discussion about that. I personally would not be interested in a full packet or the, you know, with the finance stuff, but I think those other things that, you know, those few things that you mentioned would be of, of interest for me. Yeah, I agree with Art. I'm on the same page for myself personally, since unfortunately I wasn't able to make it to the meeting. You know, and personally, I'm able to read uh, maybe five pages max. Anything after that is is not helpful for me. 
If it's not too much of a problem, I wouldn't mind the, the whole report, particularly the finance. Yeah. So as, as you uh, have that discussion about renaming the senior center, you want to make sure you have the friends on board because their, their assets now are over two and a half million dollars. You don't want to lose them as friends. <laughs> so that's, um, that's really important. Okay. Um, I think that's all for me um, right now. I'm probably forgetting something, but those were the things I'd written down. Thank you, Michelle. Marsha, it's your turn. You're muted. Yes, I am. That's I couldn't see that I was muted because I was looking at next week's city council agenda. Um, there are some pretty interesting reports uh, under general business um, that I think people um, in in this group and and actually seniors in general uh, should will be interested in being be uh, encouraged to watch. Um, first of all, there are there are three um, three updates on energy, beneficial electrification, distributed energy resources, uh, and building energy benchmarking all of which are extremely interesting to people aging in place um, because many people who are, are gonna need assistance during uh, uh, upgrading their, their next, the next time they need to upgrade an appliance uh, in order to meet city code, they could find themselves needing assistance, um, uh, especially if they want to uh, get the benefits of eliminating natural gas. Uh, and there's, um, there's a huge body of, of uh, evidence coming out that saying that uh, natural gas as a, as a domestic fuel is a real health hazard, especially to vulnerable populations such as seniors and children. So, you know, that's a double hit, right? Because many, many seniors are also caregivers for their grandchildren during the day. Um, so I think it's just a real good opportunity to become informed about what's going on with city code changes. Um, similar, similarly, there's going to be at last a readout on the Lanyon Park Initiative in terms of homeless outreach and is being done to um, I guess you would say eliminate the frictions between um, street people and uh, the residents of the neighborhood. And that's also, again, you know, it's an older neighborhood that that park is in and uh, people aging in place have a stake in that, uh, especially since one of the effects of the, of the outreach has been to drive people from a park-based encampment to an alley-based encampment. So uh, residents are actually seeing more of the of people. Um, and so I just, I'd like to um, put that out. I wish we'd known earlier. Um, one of the things that I'm working on is to try to get, uh, you know, a, a quarter long foreshadowing of things that are going to be coming before city council so that uh, people can plan to take part, plan to watch, et cetera. Um, like for example, this could have been in the go, right? Um, but it's not. And uh, you know, so, so that's, that's, I think what we have to say. We, we need to get, uh, we, need, we need to make it more possible for the public to engage with the city council, especially while we're virtual, and I don't know how long that's going to last. You know, I think at the end of this quarter, we'll probably be making another decision. Um, but I hope everyone will take note of those, uh, you know, the, the homeless outreach and the electrification plans and code changes are, are both, I think, highly impactful to the population this board serves. Any questions for me? I have a question. Sure. Um, this is actually um, 
I know it, this may not be for you, Marsha, but Michelle, I remember, um, and Janine was involved in the conversation too, about making the senior center a um, test, a, a demonstration site for um, convection or slash electric uh, stoves. And I was wondering whether that could be a goal for 2022. Uh, I hope so. Um, the, uh, the situation is I'm on the beneficial electrification committee. Right. And where the committee is right now is, um, uh, it's also meeting in the next two weeks. And uh, it is on the future agenda that we fund a test kitchen, but there yeah. has not been a decision made about where such a test kitchen could go. So um, that's an action item for me. And maybe Prudence, while you're writing the minutes, maybe you can send me a reminder note um, yeah. that because what, what the fair thing to do would probably be uh, to have an application process <clears throat> so that the senior center could say, well, here's the here's what our place would be like, and here are the people, and here's how you'd rent it, and you know, all of that stuff. Um, and uh, but yeah, I think that would be a wonderful idea to put it in the senior center. Yeah. Um, the other thing on, on this subject, because you're you're on this task force about electrification, mm -hmm. are they also talking about, um, I don't know whether they're talking about new construction, old construction, my house, your house, or whatever. Um, depending on what they're talking about, will there be financial support um, for citizens or residents, I should say, who need it. Need it. Um, yes, the, the short answer is yes. Um, we have in our possession a big body of data that, you know, that basically says, if you want people to comply with the electrification trans transition, then roughly a third of the population is going to need some level of subsidy um, right on down to we buy you the new device. And uh, one of the things that is a firm recommendation of the committee already is that the city hire a team of electricians to uh, go out and upgrade older homes, um, you know, not, not inside necessarily, but to upgrade breaker boxes to 200 amps, which is what's required and which is, you know, it, many, many of our older homes have inadequate electric service. And it's roughly, it's roughly $3,000 uh, to get that done. So that at least I think will be a, a huge for, for many people. And, and so they, they're talking about older homes as well as new construction. Is that correct? Yes, yes, I'm sorry. I. I thought I caught that and did yeah the there's there are there are tiered um, levels of compliance for old and new construction right so the the first thing that will happen is that we'll set a bunch of requirements about readiness for electrification in new homes and that may include um, some, some at least disincentive, if not ban, uh, for adding natural gas lines to new dwellings or to new single family dwellings or you know, some variant like that. Um, and then, and some of those are already adopted, you know, like uh, solar readiness is already adopted, which means a new house has to have conduit up to the roof so you could put solar panels there without tearing things apart. Um, uh, and then, as, as, as time goes on and, um, and things change and more people believe in the urgency of matters, then, um, you know, a permit, any, any, any change to a home that requires a permit will um, have, have code attached to it. 
So maybe you can buy a new gas water heater, but it's going to cost you. Mm -hmm. Whereas if you buy a, a, a heat pump water heater or even a resistive electric water heater, it won't. You know, it, it'll be much less expensive to do that. Janine? Okay. Uh, Janine? Yeah. What one of, personally, one of my concerns uh, looking at the need to replace my HVAC system is mm -hmm. the fact that I have gas heat and to uh, move to electric, uh, there's going, you know, and my home is, is like 18 years old. So when you say older homes, it's any home really that currently is going to have to replace a system. Uh, and you're right, to replace an HVAC system from gas to electric is going to require uh, permits, which uh, are several hundred dollars, plus the difference in the unit cost, as well as, you know, changing and putting in new electrical uh, circuits in my house. So all of that is, is a significant expense for anybody on a fixed income. And mm -hmm. the truth is that you've got to make the decision when you need to make that change, which for me is I'm holding my breath going to be a year, maybe two. So how quickly is all of this going to happen, Marcia? And you know, you don't want to go into a system and find out five years from now, well, you're going to have to convert again. Uh, yeah. You know, do you, do you do it now or do you risk it? And, you know, that's my biggest concern. Right. And I'm exactly where you are, Janine, um, in that I have a ducted gas uh, heating system and uh, it's at end of life. I'm hoping it lasts the winter and I'm planning to uh, install a ducted heat pump in the spring. Um, the recommendation is for displacement, replacement. So, uh, you know, you keep your limping along gas furnace as backup for really, 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 really cold days when maybe heat pump would be really expensive. Um, so, if it, your, your gas furnace is not likely to die the death, you know, it's just, it, it, it'll live a lot longer if you only use it a little bit uh, on the coldest parts of the year. So what we're doing is putting together um, contractors that are well-trained to make good recommendations, because I guarantee you, you'll get bad advice if you just pick up the phone right, <laughs> right now. Uh, we're in a transition. Um, so we're planning this. The short answer is we're planning for all of that. And the recommendations from the committee are due this summer. So you're close to the edge, but, but the, the hope is, of course, to get many people on the bandwagon as possible, including with assistance, because if you replace your gas furnace with another gas furnace, it's 15 years. Right. You need it again. And uh, <clears throat> this is the United States. We really don't much mandate that people pull out major appliances just for policy reasons. That would be a very heavy lift and generally just wrong, you know? Um, so the best idea is to, is to get everybody uh, help everybody replace with with forward looking technology when it's time for the replacement anyway. Another big concern is the utility charges that are going up and what's going to happen <laughs> when yeah. when it's all electric and it, you know are we going to be able to afford our utility bills? that have gone up 30% in the last year. So these are all questions that people are gonna have to have answers to before mm -hmm. they make those major decisions. 
Yeah, and there are now um, analysis services available. Um, Janine, if, if, for example, if your utility bill has gone up 30%, or if your electric bill has gone up 30%, it probably means you're using um, more electricity than you ought to be, because, um, and which means you've probably got a leaky house. Um, uh, because what we did was we, we made the bills like progressive income taxes. So if you're using a lot, you pay a higher rate for the high increment part of what you use um, than people who only use a little, like my electric bill went up $2. So um, yeah, and Prudence I think is next. You know, I mean, I have to, uh, agree with you about the electric because I know the state of Maine was going to have everybody go electric and there was an outcry about what will be this cost to the individual. Mm -hmm. It's a good idea. I'm not saying I agree, agree with the idea. However, um, it's like buying a car, but you don't know what it's going to cost you at the end. The other mm -hmm. thing um, <laughs> is that, you know, we're talking about um, low in uh, subsidizing uh, people below a certain uh, income level. Well, I have to tell you that those of us in the middle, um, I think Julie's is shaking her head, yes, also need income support because I think that, you know, most likely we're the homeowners. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and if you live in a HOA, you're probably not going to get a heat pump. Right. Why? I mean, who, you know, we're left out of composting already, so we got to get included in here somehow. Well, actually, that's another, that's another thing I'm pushing. I just made uh, appointments at the state legislature for curtailing the ability of uh, HOAs to interfere with mandated necessary activities. Um, but why, I, it, Ruth, in, in particular, do you think that your HOA could prevent you from getting a heat pump? Well, it all depends on space for installation, doesn't it? Well, if you've got room to, uh, to, ex, to uh, install an external air conditioner, a conventional, um, a conventional air conditioner, the heat pump is about the same size. Um, so, yeah, I don't uh, know. That, yeah, that's okay. Heat pump heat pumps are not giant. Um, the other thing that the other thing that you can do, especially if you're using it mainly for air conditioning, is you can install mini splits, which are inside the house, and, and the HOA can't really. Um, uh, can't really control what you do inside your house. So, I, I, yeah, I don't think you're going to have heat. It's rare, but uh, in this particular instance, I don't think the HOA is going to be a, uh, an interference. Any more questions? Go question. oh, ahead, yes, Art. Uh, my question is, uh, are you still in the planning stages of all this? Because the, there are certain meters that are already going to be installed uh, that have been approved already. Am I correct? Ones that yes. are going to be at the homes. Right. When so, so the upgrades, that? the upgrades to the smart meters, um, is is a done deal. Um, it, it hasn't been presented at the council yet, but but the announcement is out there. The information is available, and yes, five. Uh, there, this year there will be 500 homes um, that get them for a test, and then the the big rollout will be in 2023. Um, and that's not not tied to beneficial electrification in any particular way. What it does is make sure that the electric utility has enough information that when people start electrifying on a large scale, we can make sure that the local grid supports it. And, and how are you gonna select those homes? Do you know yet? 
Um, they picked a region uh, and there's, there is a map available. And so if maybe, you know, on the reminder note that you're gonna send me Prudence, would you put that on as well? Is, is get, the, um, get the pilot map, um, pilot area map out. Um, it's, it's right on one edge of Southmore Park is, is included. Um, although mostly it's west of Southmore Park. And that's for the electrical pumps? No, that's, that's for the electrical pumps. But can you repeat that because you're breaking up? Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, that's for the electric meters, the, oh, okay. the new communicating meters. Yeah. The old yeah. <laughs> Pardon me? Well, I would consider them old because I had them in California for like 10, 12 years. <laughs> well, actually, these are, um, uh, these are next generation ones. Uh, you know, the old ones, the old ones read your consumption and and uh, reported outages and didn't do a whole lot more than that. Um, the new ones, uh, the, the new ones uh, instrument the grid. So they really are, they're measuring the health of the distribution grid. It's outage prevention rather than, uh, you know, outage reporting. It's where the, where the high usage is in, and all these things that you don't directly see, but it it's gonna it's it's gonna support our electrification effort, our grid upgrade effort, and um, keep things reliable during this really disruptive transition that's about to happen to us. So these smart meters, you'd say they'll only be five hundred for the year for twenty twenty two. For twenty twenty two, because they've got to install them in the first quarter, and then and then monitor what how they're performing and and uh make you know make sure that that we don't have any bugs in the system before they roll it out citywide and when they do is there going to be a additional cost for all uh no it's no it's it, there there's no cost if you accept the meter okay okay so, so uh, some people don't like them and there's an opt-out uh option sorry <laughs> Um, there's the ability to opt out of having a smart meter. And if you choose that, then it costs you. Oh, okay. Okay. But, but yeah, the, this is just an equipment upgrade. You know, you don't, uh, those are planned and paid for by the, uh, electric rates that you, you know, from your electric bill. Mm -hmm. And, uh, so there's no charge for the smart meter, but there's a charge if you, if you want something different than the smart meter. And again, with the breaker boxes, et cetera, those are still in the planning stages. Those are still in the planning stages. Okay. Although again, we, we recognize the urgency of it. Thank you. Okay, we have about a seven minute countdown till noon. Prudence is gonna be signing off. Can we As get will in? I. A, yeah. Can we get in a report from Janine at least before we? Uh, mine will be very quick and precise. Uh, we basically spend a good bit of time talking about the uh, fire uh, support um, and money that had been uh, donated and how that was being distributed through Boulder County. There was an update on uh, VIA uh, and, uh, you know, it's a, a report that they've made over a thousand trips uh, in 2021 for vaccine delivery of food uh, and uh, are, we're assisting with disaster relief. Um, they plan to expand to Decono and uh, Frederick they're working at getting people that live in Larimer County uh, into Boulder County for services. Um, and uh, they're helping uh, to move people that were, that were affected by the fires and by 
evacuation and uh, we're coordinating with other ride services. Uh, they're planning to move uh, to uh, electric uh, and hydrogen uh, vehicles uh, and are looking to service more people in the uh, rural areas. Um, there was also a, re a report uh, from Cultivate uh, and they're doing home deliveries for uh, groceries, repair, snow removal, uh, transport for vet, uh, veterans, uh, even in the mountainous areas. Um, also, there was a report on Senate Bill 290, uh, which Boulder County has applied for uh, monies. Um, and uh, we're waiting to hear from that. Um, and uh, let me see, again, I'm trying to be quick. Um, Erie uh, now is requesting an adult pass passenger uh, van. Longmont Meals and Wheels are requesting uh, improvements in their software and the institution of a salad bar. Uh, and City of Longmont is looking to uh, increase dog parks, uh, pickleball facilities. I don't know what you call them, courts, I guess. Uh, and um, looking to uh, increase support uh, to the Nederland Health Clinic. So that was, I had to leave a little bit early for another appointment, but that was their update. We also will be meeting on Friday. We're all, we always meet a, a couple days after this meeting. So I'm always a month behind. Janine, did they mention personal care dollars as one of the Senate Bill 290 requests from Longmont? Because that was. Uh, let me look and see. You know, I didn't write it down, Michelle. It's not okay. that they might not have mentioned it, but I didn't write it down. Um, they also uh, were looking at funds to uh, make sure that everything is bilingual. All right, we've got people leaving. So I make a motion that we adjourn this meeting. And if there are tidbits from the other committees, we can incorporate them next month. We need a motion. I got one from Art. A second looks like from Prudence. So thank you, everybody, for being here. Take care. Safe out there. <laughs>